Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our class on chart patterns and their interpretations for Forex and CFD trading. Now, technical analysis refers to the study of the financial markets based on price movement. It uses the assumption that price reflects all the information about the asset, including market sentiment, as well as its perceived value. Charting refers to technical analysis that is performed through careful inspection of price data for the identification of well-known patterns that emerge in price, for example, head and shoulders, channels, triangles, or wedges. Now, chart patterns are well documented in technical analysis literature and are based on the psych psychological phenomena that occur between the buyers and the sellers of financial instruments in liquid markets. Pattern formations do not form a trading system, but rather provide an indication of future trends of price as it moves through key psychological barriers in the form of support and resistance. Now, there are a numerous types of chart patterns, all named according to the shapes that we see on the price graph between the support and resistance lines. The general types of patterns are the ones that we can rely on. And there's all types of weird ones out there. I saw one who came up with the Batman pattern the other day. But the ones that we rely on are triangles, channels, wedges, head and shoulders. We also have patterns like double bottoms and double tops and triple bottoms and triple tops. We have cup and saucer, but we have pennants and flags, but they're all based on channels and triangles. So let me pop up a little chart here to help you see it. This is what I call market structure. Now market structure are some of the patterns that appear in an everyday trading. So starting on the left, we see double bottom. We see bull flag, bull pennant. We see ascending triangle, descending wedge, tri triple top, bear flag, bear pennant, inverted head and shoulders, expanding wedge, cup and handle, and head and shoulders. But these are the most reliable, well-known, supported patterns. As you can see on my price chart here, we have a beautiful triangle developing on our charts. And triangles are one of the most reliable chart patterns. And from these patterns, we can actually, they will help us give us our entry point, our exit point, our target, and where to put our stop loss. So you get everything wrapped up in a pattern. Now, I don't trade from technical indicators. I trade using support and resistance and chart patterns. That is my basic whole package for trading. You can also see here, this is a beautiful triangle. We got our buy zone, we got our first target, we got our target our price accumulation, you can see our resistance zone, you can see what our projections are. Okay. All of this comes from that triangle and those support and resistance lines on a chart. So whether the, your primary analysis tool or your secondary, chart patterns work very, very well, especially in the type of markets that we are trading and they're easy to spot. So like I said, the most popular well-known is triangles. A triangle is formed between converging support and resistance lines. A negative sloping resistance line indicates resisting level of profit taking and more uncertainty about the value of an asset. Okay. Basically what we have is we have price being pushed into the apex of this formation. And we know at some given point, price is going to have to break out of that formation. Now, a lot of people give characteristics to these patterns. Like this is a bullish pennant or bullish flag, and it should be tell you a continuation where this one should be giving you a reversal. I don't pay any attention to characteristics. I want to see my chart pattern develop, and I'm going to wait for that breakout. Whether it breaks up or down is irrelevant to me. That's what I'm waiting for. I don't care what I'm seeing. I need that breakout. Then I need to confirm the breakout. And then I will use my chart pattern, basically my triangle, to figure out my target point, my entry, what price I should be entering and where I should be entering, where I should be putting my stop loss and how to calculate my risk management. So overall in triangles, there are three major types of triangles ascending wedges, descending wedges, and symmetrical triangles. They're all based on the relationship between the support and the resistance, the line above and below, forming that triangle. A descending triangle 
has a horizontal support line and a vertical and an angular resistance line, where a descending triangle or ascending triangle is the exact opposite. And a symmetrical triangle has the two angles of the or the two levels above them forming the triangle, the support and resistance lines coming together at the same um, degree. Now, once we've realized that we have a triangle pattern, we can use that triangle to set our, take profit points, our momentum, how far we expect the triangle to, to move when it breaks out. And the standard formula for triangles is we can expect the momentum of the breakout to carry it the same width of the base of the triangle. Some people say one and a half. I'm conservative. I use one. So it's important to note that an ascending triangle can also be found in a downtrend. So the combination of the name of the triangle and the market trend are deceiving. Okay. Now, we want to wait for price either to break upward or downward, break out. And we want to look for volume to confirm the breakout. From that point, we can then start setting our target, our stop loss, and our take profit points. But we also get the same thing in what we call a rectangle or a channel. Now rectangles, I don't really trade. Rectangles are more or less triple tops and triple bottoms. And channels are support and resistance both moving downward at the same degree. Okay, I don't even know if I classify them in my pattern interpretations. But they are well known and they work extremely well. And we have up channels and down channels. And then we go on and we have rectangles. So like I said, a rectangle just looks to me like double bottoms and double tops. And then we have wedges. We have a continuation wedge and a reversal wedge. But a wedge looks just like a triangle, except they have different, angular, different angles on their slopes. So I apply the same thing that I would apply to my triangle. And as price gets forced closer and closer to the apex, it gets narrower and narrower, we wait for the breakout of that price pattern. And then we have a well-known complicated pattern called a head and shoulders. A head and shoulders pattern describes basically a human being. You know, a human being has two shoulders and a head. Now, lots of traders want to put very strict rules on this, but I say it's just like human beings. Some of us have long necks and high heads. Some of us have high, far, high foreheads. Some of us have sloping shoulders. Some of us have very broad shoulders. Some of us have round shoulders. But it means price will push up and then come back down and when it comes back down to the same bottom and then moves back off it that's starting to form what we call the neckline it then pushes up and forms the head okay the head is higher than the shoulders it comes down to that same neckline and then comes up and forms the right sided shoulder which is equal distance as the first shoulder and then starts moving back down to the neckline and we don't can't do anything at all until it forms that last leg after it's made the right shoulder and then when it crosses that neckline and is crossing downward in a standard head and shoulder tells us the market is shifted and you can go in for a short trade. An inverse head and shoulders is just the opposite and will tell you you can go in for a long or a buy trade. Now the, the popular head and shoulders pattern is essentially a triple top. But the center of the triple top, the center part of the top, is much higher. Now, people, some people put all types of calculations. It's got to be 10% higher or 15%. I say it's a human being. As long as you have a, two shoulders and a head, it can be cockeyed. It can have a short neck, a long neck, a wide neck. It needs to form the shoulders and the head. Because in real life trading, it gets much harder to pick it out. And a head and shoulder pattern takes a lot of time a lot of candles to make its formation. But once we have this formation, we can then apply some standard calculations. Okay. And that is our target price when we get the breakout is equal to the neckline minus the head minus the neckline. And that's a pretty easy calculation. And this is how it works on all patterns even in a reverse upside down. So once we have our target, we also have our entry point because our entry point will be slightly below the formation of the bottom shoulder of the bottom. 
our take our our stop loss point would be the top height of the of the shoulder. So therefore, we have our take profit point, we have our stop loss point, we have our entry point, and we have everything we need to make a trade. Then, of course, like I mentioned earlier, we had multiple tops and bottoms, double tops and double bottoms, triple tops and triple bottoms. Now, I don't spend my time dealing with double bottoms and double tops. Why? Because in, especially in our type trading, when we're you know, using 15 minute charts, five minute charts, 30 minute charts, one hour charts. OK, and we're using fast pace. These happen all the time. So they very if you were to you start doing strategy and calculate every time you got a double bot, bottom and double top you never get anywhere. <clears throat> now, a triple is a little bit more reliable because to form a top and a bottom equal distance over and over and over again starts telling us something important is happening. So it's establishing a support and resistance and bouncing between those. But an important measure of the quality of a pattern is the trend that precedes it. It does not matter whether the trend is bullish or bearish, but the consistency and the duration of the initial trend partly determines the well-formedness of the pattern. In other words, if you get a triangle coming off of a nice uptrend or a nice downtrend, that triangle is going to be a lot more reliable. And the more well-developed, the prettier that triangle is, the more reliable it would be as a trading piece of information. Now, the pattern is said to have broken out once it has crossed either the support or the resistance line. If the pattern broke out in the same direction as the preceding trend, it could call, be called a continuation pattern. If it breaks out in the opposite direction of the preceding trend, it's a reversal pattern. So as we can see on the simple chart here, we can then use the same basic formulas, the width of the pattern, will give us our target point. Our entry point would be the height of the breakout, the, the candle when it broke out. The stop loss would be placed below the, the preceding swing low or swing high, depending on which way it's going. And we would always wait for volume for confirmation. And we always, I always believe in waiting for the third candle formation. The first candle that breaks out or the first bar that breaks out of your pattern is your breakout candle. That will give you your price to enter. The second candle would be my confirmation. It needs to break, stay outside of that pattern because a lot of times it'll break out and go right back into the, into the triangle or the pattern. And then the third candle is my entry candle. I would enter in that third candle as soon as that price hit that entry point. And then I would use that stop loss, my target point and do my trade. And you can see you get these same formulas for rising wedges, bearish triangles, bearish pennants, bullish pennants, bullish rectangles, and falling wedges. So remember, we always want to look at the preceding trend and the well-developed trend as well as the well how well-developed the pattern is. So that's it. And that's the basics for understanding chart patterns. So remember, technical analysis traders use the term continuation pattern to describe seemingly random price movements that can be interpreted to mean a current larger trend is likely to continue. There are both bullish and bearish continuation patterns. Any given pattern is not considered complete until the price is broken out of the pattern and resume the previous trend or reverse the previous trend. There are plenty of false breakouts and apparent patterns that form but still lead to a trend reversal. Also, despite their widespread appearance, continuation patterns are still somewhat subjective. And this is why I don't ever look at whether they are a continuation or a reversal. I only care that we have the pattern and where we the reversal is. Did the reversal break up or did it break down? And then we also want to pay attention to our support and resistance lines above and below that price, because we can't set our target price higher than the next resistance level. So in order to do our risk reward ratio, if our target price would be higher than the next resistance level, we have to reduce that target price below that resistance. 
Now, trading bait breakouts is best done when the prevailing market condition is either uptrending or range bound, with price action approaching the upper end of a range. Once a resistance level has been identified, volume should be monitored very closely. Volume is your final key to understanding that this is a true breakout and not a false breakout. So that's a general introduction to chart patterns. Now we have all types of webinars uh, available on our site, our YouTube channel, and you can see them on trading triangles, the triangle trading strategy, the one, two, three strategy. And we'll then look at these in live markets and how we would actually trade them as they occur in the markets and what, what the whole strategy would be that we would use to apply to them. So thank you very much for joining us today and subscribe to our YouTube channel and come watch all the videos you like.